<laughs> Greetings and welcome to a Monday edition of the Shotgun Start. It is October 7th. Andy, how we doing? Brendan, I'm doing pretty good. I got to say it's Victory Monday. I am uh I'm a happy boy. Good. Which what what's the victory? The Bears? Yeah, yeah, the Bears. The Bears. They they, they got the beat Bears. up on the Panthers, whipped up on the worst team of the league. I love it. I'm happy for you. I, I watched, good. I watched, you got to have fun. First, you got to enjoy these, the first half, these moments. The first half. There was a level of quarterback play in the first half that I don't know if I've ever experienced in my life. I mean, I'm sure you like Jay Cutler probably threw for 400 yards in a game or something like that. You, you come on. In your life, to quote Vernon Lundquist? Yeah, I, th- I think so. I think so. Like, I, I remember there were some good Cutler games. There's some good Cutler moments. But that was still during the era of, like, uh, the Moussin Muhammad uh, quotes of, uh, the, you know, Chicago's where quarterbacks go to, or uh, wide receivers go to die. Yeah. Yeah. Today it- seemed like we might... Might be on the uh, at the very at the very beginning of of an era of offensive football in Chicago, which we've never had an era of offensive football. Sure, sure. Well, good. I'm happy for you. It's a good good I victory feel, Monday. That's. I fabulous. feel like you might be on the other spectrum of things. Oh no, absolutely not. My hometown team, the Commanders, looked amazing. A victory <laughs> Monday here, and my house is happy. I couldn't be more happy. My rookie quarterback, my local rookie quarterback, is on fire and alive. I'm just, I'm, I can't be more excited about the years to come. Hey, uh, I got to ask. Great today. I, I came home from a. I was in Austin, and I came home from yeah. the trip to uh, to the swag Ditka head cover. That thing's sweet. Right? That thing's pretty good. This is Swag Sports Minute right off the top here. Sundays in the fall, I guess, so, are just going to be Swag Sports Minute. So I got to ask you a question. Where do you have, They sent you Commander's um, head cover, right? For your local team. I don't think they have the license yet. They're still sorting it out. New team name, new logo. <laughs> I think it's just a licensing issue. Oh, so what did they send you? Nothing yet. Uh, nothing. No. I don't have. I uh, haven't been okay. privy. They're figuring out the licensing deal. I think I am maybe getting a Browns one. I don't know why. I don't know why I would be affiliated with them. Uh, I just my hometown Commanders are flying. They beat up on somebody today. Look good. <laughs> just an ass kicking. Marcus Mariota's in by the third quarter or something. Uh, that, so it's great. I mean, the Commanders are flying. The Gardos, Guardians, Hi. just kicking ass. Seven nothing. Completely, you know, stress free. Game one, just the way you, I couldn't be happier with Victory Monday. So I just searched on uh, on Twitter. I just searched Deshaun. Uh-huh. It's like unbelievable. Hey, the whole team's bad. Like, let's not let the disaster of Deshaun Watson, which is like like an unmitigated disaster. And these people are like, oh, you got to be so mad and sad and down and, and angry. Like. Dude, you're with me. PJ's with me. We're already dead. Like, nothing can get worse. Like, this isn't like, we've seen much worse than this. There's all the whole moral quandary, not quandary, moral, you know, disgust <laughs> um, that comes with this one, too. But, like, it's not like a bad football team, bad quarterback play, and, and an embarrassment of a team is, like, this is just not going to, you can't kill us anymore. We're already pretty dead inside, and we've seen way worse. Um, did he just, just give up? Did he give up on a play today? No, no. This is where I would say, like, he's bad, but the whole team's a shit show. We got too many men on the field twice in four plays on defense, twice in four plays. He gave up because there were, I think, 13 guys in the huddle. And he's just like, all right, well, we're getting a penalty. I'm walking off the field. This was after we had first and goal from the three, we got a false start. Call timeout after a false start. I mean, this is the start of the second half. We're down 20 at that point or 14, 17. Like, you're going to need timeouts. You need points. So, we get a false start, a timeout. I think a loss, uh, you know, stuffed. Then we have a drop uh, touchdown, like right in the hands of Jerry Judy, like right in the hands of Jerry Judy. Uh, I saw then that. a sack. I think. Uh, I don't know. I'm missing one. Maybe the sack was the loss of down, like the loss of yardage. 
And then, you know, a delay of game penalty, a first and goal at the three. So it was, it's, it's stupid. The, the coaches don't know what's going on on the sideline. There's drop passes. Like it is the Deshaun thing, rightfully so. Let's make that the headliner and make that 98% of the coverage fine. But uh, there's a lot more that's that's just a disaster right now. We're, and, and you know what's great? We're back in the good old days of just not having to care by October 10th. Like, just doesn't even matter. Great the emotional detachment. Why, why, why get yourself, you know, sucked in at all? Enjoy the league as a whole. It's just great. It's, it's fabulous. We're a disgrace. We're a complete disgrace. So it's good. But uh, I now I have a commanders to root on. I have a real team. So. I think, the, I think the, the Bears might be a playoff team. I hope for your sake and this podcast's sake they are. I would not mind that. You know, everybody's gonna, everybody's like, oh, it's the Panthers. It's the Panthers. You know what good teams do? They take bad teams out to the woodshed and they beat yeah. them up. And that's what the Bears did today. That's what the commies did today. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> it's great. I like, is that what the locals are calling them? I, I, like some version of them call them that. I, it stuck with me. I just call them the I, commies. I don't know. I like that a lot. It's a good shorthand. We got, the, we got Bears commies coming up. Oh, good. Where is that one? Is that in Chicago or is it local? In Northwest Field. Oh, man. If it's Previously. local, I might come. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. the 27th. Of October? Oh. What? I'm going to be on the East Coast that week. I think yeah. I'm out of town. Sunday yeah. of October 27th? Yeah. I may be coming back. We'll see. We'll figure. All right. All right. It's in, it's in DC. I, I have to, I have to buy back some marriage capital if I want. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. be a, to be an expensive trip at the, at the marriage bank. Well, if you out there need to buy back marriage capital, maybe they want to make Dick a head cover. That's, maybe that's, that's the right. way to go. Oh, this is my line. I had cover. Oh, you got an alliance? I want. How'd they do this? Week? They were off this week. They're, well, they moved up one in the rankings. We're up to 24. I saw that. So, I saw 24 that. in the rankings, number one in your heart. Um, PJ, we, we have a new promo code. What is the promo code that we have for some? I'm putting you on the spot. It's TFE okay. or what, TFE. what do we have to do? Okay. TFE. So they're giving okay. away, they're giving away a, a, a free putter for listeners who make a purchase Monday the 7th through Friday the 11th. If you make a purchase from swag.golf, with code TFE at checkout, you're entered for a chance to get a core collection putter from Swag Golf. Those aren't pretty- those aren't nothing to sneeze at. Those are collectors pricey that's a good items. Promo. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's a real carrot there. Uh, so you have to make a purchase of anything. Could be a shirt, a head cover, whatever, between October 7th and the 11th this, this week, week. Us- yep. using the promo code TFE, and you could you're entered into get a, a, a core collection putter. Those are not cheap that's a good good giveaway all right you know i might make a swag. recommendation you could get this here mike dick had cover hey i feel you like could cheer on you could cheer on the offensive juggernaut of the nfl the chicago bears i feel like the dick hero worship is like just a little over i agree i don't, I don't disagree like this, I, the iconography i get like because he had a look I mean, I don't, he stays like 40 years later. They're still acting like, I don't know. It's weird. He won a Super Bowl. That's good. The I, entire I 85 Bears are yeah, sure, put up sure. on this paddle. It, it's like, it's been 40 years. Right. Right. But he's like the guy still. He's this icon. Uh, PJ, which, did you know, the Mets lose today? Yes. Yes. Yes, they did. Seesaw very, battle. Very depressingly lost. Bottom of the ninth. Wor- worse after coming back in the today top is of the night. today i gotta i gotta be be honest 12 hours of just pure <laughs> unadulterated horrible efforts for my teams it was really fear really confronts was that bad <laughs> well no fear <laughs> confronts was two hours of of actually decompressing from the jets into four o'clock mets it was like kind of a great medium uh, it was. It well, actually, that's what it's there for. It was, the, it was the highlight. Senior tour golf. That's it's there to decompress you. 
generally the highlight of my day. Uh, yeah, it was really bad. Really bad stuff today from from the Giants one. Papa was probably fired up by, on the radio <laughs> yeah. broadcast. One on the road. In Seattle, yeah. it's a good win for them. Uh, what do you have anything on the jet? Like, it's not good. Aaron Rodgers. Is so Rodgers, I, Rodgers I, doesn't look good. I made a joke. I tweeted out uh, a link to Shadir Sanders highlights at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Brentley decided to reply to my tweet saying, you know, that means Dion is the head coach. Dude, like, what do I care? Yeah. Like, it can't get Try any worse. Sure. Like, Solid. I'm pretty. Uh, this is a rare instance where the Mets have outlasted the Jets season, which is kind of cool. So I'm same with I'm, my, I'm same boat with you. I'm there. gonna yeah. I'm gonna yeah. just ride out this week Wait. and see what happens. Hold so, on, yep. the Brendan, your commies are four and one. <laughs> That's true. I forgot. <laughs> Flying high. Apparently, they don't have to take a plane for like another two months. Or yeah, that was a great. That was a great. Shefty was tweet. all. <laughs> Shefty's like, great. Shefty tweet. Shefty's like you know breaking an open Watergate with that tweet. He just thinks he's the man. These odds and ends and bits uh yeah so go commies the the promo code is tfe it's swag.golf or swaggolf.com use the promo code tfe all right that's swag sports minute let's do a little golf minutes plural um on this monday morning what where do you want to go first what's your event do you want to do donhill you want to do do donhill How about Dunhill. Nico Colsart? I was, I was so happy. I was kind of. That was the only only part of this Monday that's not a victory Monday for me. Yeah, I was really pulling for uh, for Colsart. Yeah, it was a bummer. Yep, I that would have been a, an amazing win. Uh, you know, he talked about it frequently this week, and I think even after the he lost by a shot to Turrell Hatton uh, on the 18th at the old course. He talked about it frequently. Like, you know, I, I was kind of half in more of a broadcaster, more of like, what can I do for the Ryder Cup operation? How can I, you know, what's my role there going forward? How can I help there? And, and working in the, as they call it, the commentary box, uh, you know, that's what he was trending toward. And now all of a sudden, I mean, this was a heavy duty European tour event, you know, with yeah. the mix of live guys that were present and, you know, the regulars. Um, some of the high powered regulars like Rory, Shane Lowry, things like that. This was a heavy duty Euro tour event and he's one off the lead runner up. I mean, we talked uh, PJ, PJ, one of the first pods PJ produced uh, when he came on board was Cole starts uh, Olympics preview with me. Yeah. And I, I reached out to him and I'm like, Hey, do you want to talk about the Olympics? He goes, yeah, I'm spending the month, month in Ibiza. So whenever, <laughs> I mean, like that's it's just kind of amazing. Yeah. In the middle of summer, he's just yeah. hanging out in Ibiza. Yeah. I yeah. know I'm mispronouncing that. Ibiza or whatever however you Is pronounce that right? it. I think I think that's how you pronounce it. Oh, I only know it from the song. I mean they pronounce it Ibiza in that song. It's um, not Ibiza. That's that's a uh, that's I know that for a fact. It. It's yeah. a, a bastardized. It. Apologize um, to any Ibizans. So Colsar is runner up. <laughs> ridiculous he's runner up uh doesn't get i think he only gets one more start he he lives in abu dhabi but i don't i don't think just based on where he is on the points of the status he gets to he starts the first event in that that abu dhabi swing um, oh to close it he's up, up to 11th at Ryder cup points he's on the team right now i mean okay right. he's into the top 200 of the owgr that's awesome that's great Need to get him question. out of the commentary box. I'm working we on his swing. We could have play. three three Belgians on this Ryder Cup team. Who would be the others? D Tree and uh, ADDC. Isn't ADDC struggling a bit <laughs> yes. after that initial burst when he turned pro? <laughs> Hasn't been good. Speaking of while we're here, did you see like you know these Euros when they talk about the Ryder Cup? They talk about how it's so much. I think it was. Thomas Bjorn, maybe on the no line up, I saw the social clip or something. Like just how you can't explain it. There's just something more. And the young guys come in and they immediately lo- like they just what how do I become this? How do I contribute? There's like this ethereal thing that that is just this mystifying. Um speaking of Belgians, Thomas Peters is like, ah, I'm not really gonna tell my kids about the Ryder Cups I played on. They're not gonna give a shit. Seemed pretty flippant about this Ryder Cup 
experience or any, I don't know, future uh, desire. I feel like TP kind of waffles a lot. Kind of kind of goes back and forth, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't I mean, think you get reliable, f- consistent uh, commentary from him. I that just, Hazeltine was magic, though. Magic. It was we amazing. thought he was going to be on 10 Ryder Cup teams. Some, for a large part of the American audience, not Illinois fans, that, like, he was, that was his coming out party. And they like, loved him. Uh, they, you know, the Euros got boat race, but I, who knows? Just maybe an interview off the cuff. He said, you know, my, I'm not going to talk to my kids about the Ryder Cups. That's not what I... Anyways, just it was interesting in contrast to the, I think it was the Bjorn clip I just watched. Um, Hatton's your actual winner. Beats Cole Sertz by a shot. Uh, gets up and down from 18. Cole Sertz putts it. Doesn't necessarily, I don't know. He didn't get it up there and through the break as much as he would have liked. And makes a par. Uh, and Hatton clips him by a shot. It was great theater. Into the wind, coming home. Hey, uh, Cole Sartre played 17 beautifully after driving it wild left, kind of chipped it, threw it back to the uh, pin and, to make his par. Really fun. Hatton, like a complete lunatic. Talking about the greens. I think it was at Kingsbarn said they were shit all weekend. He's on he's on hot mics. He's at 11 today, Eden. And it looks like he's going to like throw his club into the estuary. He's so mad about where it's going. He hits it to like seven feet. It's, it's like in the wind. You just think he just blew it off the planet. And it it lands seven feet and settles at the back near the near the hole. Uh, but an incredible victory three times now he's done that, uh, which speaks to a, as much as he hates all the great golf courses in the world, and I may mean all of them at this point. Uh, he's a proper player, proper he pro. Is. He yeah. is a proper pro. The thing I think that's impressive about Hatton, you know, there have been he's keeps he keeps getting better. I think like. Yeah, arguably yeah. last year was his best year. Uh, not last year as in like this year, the, the year before that, he yeah. gets the big live deal. Yeah. I mean, he's old. He's not your like quintessential pro. Like he's not on the, you know, really young come out, hot flame out. He's 32. A lot of guys like we've seen with like JT and Jordan hit their thirties. And it's like, well, what are we now? Hatton keeps getting better. Um, I think like if you said at the Whistling Straits Ryder Cup, like Hatton wasn't, he kind of got got beat up there. And it yeah. was like, I, th- I feel like I, I might even been, you know, he's not a world-class player compared to like he was, it felt like at that point, it was that 20, what was that, 21? Yes. So 2021, at that point, it didn't feel like Hatton was like, a world-class player. Now it does. It certainly does. I think he's one of the best 14 players in the world. Would you say? Uh, that's reasonable. I, I, yeah. I don't think I would tell you you're crazy. If you're suggesting that, uh, he's won Dunhill three times. He's won a Wentworth one on the, uh, PGA tour only once with Bay Hill, you know, he's part in part out, uh, has done nothing in majors, like nothing uh, that yeah. continues to be sort of a, a, a gap he needs to fill, but it was enjoyable to uh, to watch that on Sunday morning. Can I just say something that's completely preposterous? Is <laughs> you have these guys with like career defining moments on the seventy second hole, and you have the AMs just puttering around <laughs> in the way. Jeff Hatton, his I was, father, I was, was just I like wanted to ask what he thought going about up Jeff and Hatton. down and through. Like Cole Sartre is trying to get up and down for like this rejuvenating old time. I don't know. The, the dad is like putting up and off the green and through the line. Ari Emanuel is there, uh, you know, with E chipping to the through the green and trying to putt back to make his. It's just crazy. It's cr- like I don't know. Get it out of there <laughs> on Saturday or something. Or it's just, it's sort of a, I I know that's what makes this event what it is and unique and it's fun and it's cool. I, I, I I like it for all of that, but it's just, it's sort of remarkable to see that given the stakes and the tension in the moment. Um, I think pro amps should be completely disassembled (laughs) and moved, moved out of pro golf. I'm talking about like the Monday and Wednesday pro amps as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
Here's why. I voiced this recently to someone, I guess an influential person on in the PGA Tour. Not a, not a, I voiced this exact thing. I think they should be disbanded because they're an injury risk. Pro golfers are getting hurt Who playing these programs. Molinax got Mullenax hurt by a ball. Yeah, he was in concussion protocol for months. <laughs> I I can't agree more. I remember we at Riviera this year, and it was like so dark and cold and late. I was like, we need to get the hell out of here. And then you just had it was like seven thirty on Fe- or whatever six of thirty on a February night, and you just have these players going around the six hour Wednesday pro am. They got a game tomorrow. Got a game to play. Yeah, and you're playing with sixteen handicaps hitting it all over the yard at like dusk. I couldn't believe it. I was like, they just shouldn't have to do this anymore. I do not believe in the plight of the PGA Tour player or the P- pro golfer. I'm not like a, a a big person that will like, you know, I do. I do not envy them at all, yeah. though. Yeah. And I do feel bad for them every Wednesday. Every Wednesday when they have to go out and play that six <laughs> hour pro R, pro-am round. I do yeah. feel bad for them. It's a tough life. Well, if we got rid of them, we might not be able. It might eliminate uh, Toasty's method of caddy recruitment. Did you see that? I don't know many details. I'm getting more invest. I'm investigating a little bit more. It's just a guy in Mississippi he played the pro am with. He asked a caddy with them by Thursday. Texted him. Fun playing the other day. Can you caddy for me? I think his caddy was like hurt. I don't know that he fired him this time. I um, saw he was at the Florida football game Saturday night. Oh, he was. Okay. All right. He was, he was on the field. <laughs> oh, really? Legend. Ale Toasty. Um, did they beat UCF, PJ? Would you know that off the top of your head? No. I don't, okay. I don't know. Okay. Off the top of my head. figured you might know that one. It's kind of um, sad for Florida football fans that they've gotten to irrelevance. You know who didn't win? It's not good. Who? I feel like I mushed him. Who? Alabama. What did you, how did you mush him? I forget. I fired off the tweet about the President's Cup and how it's like Vandy versus Alabama. And sure, oh, Vandy no. might have a couple good plays. Oh, God. But they're never going to win. Oh, God. That's great. That is good. Love that. <laughs> Florida, Florida did win. Finally. Okay. All right. That's good. Um, all right. I think that, oh, Dunhill, one last bit Bob, of cleanup. Big shot, Bob. Big shot, Bob. I mean, hey, also playing with his dad. He's got some takes, like big shot. Do you see how pissed he got at Rory? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm pissed. Maybe not the the right word, but it looked like it. He mutters like I knew he was going to hit. He hits into him. I forget what day and where that was. I think it was Friday. Uh, whatever course they were at Friday. And, you know... I feel like we need to define hitting into. We need to broaden like how their levels. If the ball rolls up to you, I don't think you've been properly hit into. I now, agree if it with lands that. like a bomb, like and they're dropping bombs on you from the air, separate matter. But if the ball's gently rolling from 30, 40 yards in and it, it, it you know comes to rest within your 30, 40 foot circle, I just I don't think that's a that's a real hit into situation. And Bob was not happy though with Rory. So, am I okay with that clarific that classification? I'm okay with that. I'm I'm also I also love love him putting out takes about the 17th at, at the old course and how it needs to be blown up. Says, blow it up. I don't think there are many worse holes in world golf. Get rid of it. He's out. It's 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 garbage. He's a native of Scotland. Now he's from Oban, a different portion of part of the country on the on the west coast and more north. Uh, I don't know if this is a Canada situation, east first west, so he has no affinity for for Fife. But I can't believe he's going at the road hole like that. What's a legitimate critique? Too too gimmicky for a pro. That's why they would be pissed. I mean, it was playing into the wind today, so it, sure. I did I. I I will say it was awesome to see some proper Scottish weather 
You know, the Dunhill is always a little softer than an open, but it just shows how freaking hard that back nine is if you get in the wrong wind. You know, yep. it was like, yep. hold on, hold on, and just like for dear life and try and get through that. And, uh, but I think that's probably it. He probably doesn't like hitting a long iron into that skinny green. But like the whole point of it is a par four and a half and and 18 is a par three and a half. And you try and get through that stretch in eight. Like, and if you get through it in eight and if you get through in seven, you've done really well. You know? I think it's a terrible hole off the back tee. It doesn't need to be modernized. To bring excitement, it needs to be a hole you're able to hit a golf shot into and not one where you just hit it onto the green and try to get up and down. So he he doesn't like like the long iron. Yeah. It almost plays like a par five. They try to do things to this golf course that don't need to be done. I mean, the guys what were shooting f- 60 on Saturday, 61. Today, I rifled the drive off the tee and then a four iron, and I was the furthest up the hole. So he's mad about having to hit the four iron into, I guess, a green that's not. Good guys used about. to hit like three wood into that green. We watched Lydia Ko this summer hit a three wood in. Lydia Ko hit a three wood to what, like 20 feet? Yeah, that's a great shot. I appreciate him throwing this out there. I do too. I do appreciate. I like people Can having ratioed. golf course takes. Yeah, he it's seems art. To- it should elix el- some. El- 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 should like bring out some wide ranging opinions. Yeah, yeah. A, go- a-, a golf course that everybody says is like, oh, it's great. Good golf course. It's probably not that great. There should Class. be some people that hate it. Yeah, fair, fair. There. Um, all right, that does it for the Dunhill. Uh, let's get dialed in at Club Champion. Let's go to Club Champion. Hard you know left what? turn. For you know what? what? You know what would have been really uh, helpful in a wind like they were facing it's in St. Andrews today? Uh, proper optimization, proper fit clubs. I think like the biggest thing here is like having your spin rates right, having them yeah. locked in. Um, you're, you, you know, I think everybody like wants to be described like, you know, you hit a ball and so, somebody says, man, that guy hits a, hits a heavy ball. Mm-hmm. That'd be a nice, nice descriptor word. Oh, you sure. hit, he hits a heavy ball thing. Just, just is unfazed by the wind. You know how you hit a heavy ball? <clears throat> Go to club champion. Get your, I mean, I think you probably have to get some lessons or figure out some swing mechanics, but also you need the you need the arrows in addition in addition to the uh the, to this to the bow that whatever you got going your motion. Uh, so go to Club Champion, use the promo code Fried Egg. Uh, it's fifty dollars off the fitting cost with the purchase of Club uh, when you use the promo code Fried Egg. Uh, they've got sixty thousand hittable head and shaft combos. Uh, master fitters that you know will take care of you after long after you've made your purchase my buddy goes in there annually just gets things tightened and you know and no cost fixed looked at just confirmed you're good send you on your my way scr- i can get my screws looked at your pxg screws i lost my bit again oh you did you need to go in there and get the there's a little too much rattling going on <laughs> Well, so I want to be clear. This is not a club champion issue. No. It's a PXG issue. Okay. Just, just be clear on who you're popping here. Uh, but yes, go, use the promo code FRIDAY. You, you get uh, $50 off. Is it $50 or 50%? Oh, I think it's $50 off the fitting co- cost. No, it's it's, the, it's way more than... It's it's half off, I think. Half fitting. off. 50% off Let the me, fitting cost. I've got, I got it right here. I got it right here. I've only been here. doing just, this one for two years. It's a $100 full bag fitting with a club okay. purchase Shit. or $50 off any other fitting with a oh, club that's purchase. That's where I was getting the 50 from. Okay. Okay. $100 full bag fitting. That's a good deal. That is a good deal. Clubchampion.com. Uh, all right. Let's go to the Sanderson where Kevin, you. I got, I got to say. My wife was not happy with me today. Why? So I get done with, with the Bears victory, and I just locked in to the Sanderson. It's kind of interesting. A lot of jockeying, despite Golf Channel's efforts to impede you. Um, it was interesting. Keith Mitchell, Bo Hostler, Kevin Yu, 
a lot of jockeying going on at the Country Club of Jackson. Uh, which Can was I just say something real a quick? A six undercut, just just an absolute pitch and putt fest all week. Soft greens, <laughs> just relief giving everywhere. What? What are you going to say? Can, I want to ask you a question. Um, Please. Is is Country Club of Jackson the most generic looking golf course on the PGA Tour? It's up there. I mean, I would say, you know, Royal Montreal last week was in the running. I guess that's not a regular anymore on the PJ Tour. It's just, it's just, it's just a golf course. It's like, <laughs> if, if it's like, if you're doing some like marketing deck and you know nothing about golf and you want to put a slide in on the back and you just like go golf course, <laughs> this is might be what you'd come up with. It's a stock image. Yes. AI style golf course, country club of Jackson. It's something like that. Um, but Wait, Sanderson's I, back in triumphantly. The chicken, the the proud cock trophy's coming back for twenty. Did you watch? Did you watch that tournament? I mean, I watched the last hour or so. Did you see Eddie putt that broke like more than like <laughs> oh, God. like four inches? So as soon as you put it to five feet in the playoff, you're like, all right. Mark Rolfing in the, the post game was like, that was, that was, that's a putt. That's got some break in it. He's like, no, it really did. <laughs> that wasn't nothing. I mean, I, you know, there's a title on the line, so there's extra nerves. But in terms of the putt, he just kind of swept it in. The other thing that made this like an extremely <laughs> unser- I mean, there are a lot of things that made it an extremely unserious um, <laughs> broadcast. Yeah. But did you notice when Hostler in the playoff hit it to the left? They're like, he, yeah. you know, he's, he's in a better spot than last time, but, you know, he might have tree trouble. He might have some limbs in his way. Uh, and it was like very clear from the way whoever they kicked it to was talking that he wasn't there. And it's like, okay, so it's a two person playoff. The one guy hit it down the fairway <laughs> and your on course person isn't where the other ball is. That's in the potentially in the trees and blocked out. Cannot actually tell us what's going on with the lie. Fair, fair, fair pickup on that one. I, I don't want to, I don't want to shout about coverage. I was watching this. You asked if I watched it. I was watching this as I made dinner. So AirPods in, I'm scrambling from burners to sink. I'm uh, cutting, chopping, doing whatever. And I've got the AirPods in. So I'm not like watching. I'm listening as much as I'm watching. And, uh, and <clears throat> they, uh, they go to break. They're like, all right, Bo is like throwing it hissy fit, right? He's got a bee in his bonnet about like, I mean, unjustifiably so. He's behind a tree. And he's pissed. He goes, Well, I'm just gonna do this. I would I would hit it this way. I would just I would hit it like this. And you're you're telling me I couldn't, I'm not, I'm not gonna hit get relief from that TIO. You're behind a tree. You put your ball there. Bro, the tree directly behind. I want to clarify this was in regulation, 18th hole. He's tied yes. for the lead. He hits and, it right behind a tree. And he's throwing these hypotheticals out there. I think like if the tree didn't exist, like I would, the TIO would be in my way, but the tree does exist. And that's the golf course and the shot that you have to play. Even if there's TIO 500 yards off yonder, that conceivably in line. Um, and he goes, I want a second opinion. He was pissed. I mean, I think he was, he was, you know, in the zone trying to win and, and uh, doing what he should do, I think. But he was, he was advocating for kind of a bullshit with with not a leg to stand on and i'm listening and listening and listening and then like it just goes to you know brez tree or something like the, this vabismo yeah. or whatever you know blue chew i'm like what's going on this is the 72nd hole it's the last group there's a confrontational ruling ongoing with a second opinion incoming and they're in commercial it was i don't think it was even playing through I, I'm not sure I could confirm that because I had the AirPods going and I was like in and out, but I think it was just a pure break. And so they come back and they don't even try to tell you what's going on. They're just like, oh, you got the second ruling. Steve Rintoul said no. And uh, he chipped out. Did 
like, I think this is in. I don't want to yell about TV coverage. I think that's become so passe, and it's the job's hard. This is inexcusable on like Thursday when this could be interesting. But it's there's only one group left. <laughs> Why are you going it's into literally the break? last hole? It's it's two minutes left, or one. One minute and 20 seconds left to the football game, and they cut to commercial on the most consequential play and come back after. Or the officials coming out to say, after further review, all right, yeah. let's go to break. <laughs> they caught him right there. They, don't even, they just don't even tell you what happened. You can't do this. I don't want to pile up. You can't. This is, this is unserious Mickey Mouse bullshit. All right. Anyways, it's just the Sanderson. Uh, it's, it's just, it is just the Sanderson, but if you do it at the Sanderson, it means you'll do it at, at other events. And it's just a giant F you to viewers. It's a giant F you to people like me who made their wife sit on the couch and watch two hours of Sanderson coverage today. And <laughs> oh, then God. the moment it finally gets interesting, you cut away from it. I mean, the only people watching are the ones who like are diehards who want to see this kind of thing. And, you know, they're talking about we're going to do walk and talks now. We're going to like, I don't think they got like, just just do the easy stuff, the important stuff. Right. I don't know. I, I hate talking about coverage, but I had to as I was on my AirPod. I was like, I can't believe this is happening. I like look up from the pots and pans You're like what? I, I want to propose something else for pro golf. Oh God! You should get a maximum of two unsuccessful TIO requests <laughs> in a tournament. Oh, maybe a month. So Hassler goes zero for two with his <laughs> yeah. preposterous request, where he just wasted everybody's time. Then he hits it left again. Uh huh. And what does he immediately do? Pulls the official over Come on to up. ask for TIO. He and I thought this was time, ridiculous right? yeah. that he got it. I thought it was yeah. insane that he got it. From the angle, it looked pretty re- like, no, yeah. he's not going to hit that shot. He Because it would have taken him more <laughs> over the bunker. There was no way he was hitting that shot. Yeah. But he gets this free drop, which makes the shot a little easier. But then I was thinking about it. It's like, you know, it should be like challenges. You get two, you get, yeah. you get more. Yeah, you if, lose you, them. if you're successful, you yeah. keep going. But if you, if you're unsuccessful, you get them taken and it would stop this preposterous. Like he literally in, in his request was like, well, what if I just say, maybe this is where it went wrong for him. Well, what if I just say, I'm going to hit it that way. Yeah. Is that what was, he said. Quote unquote. He, 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 yes. And then he ran with it. It's pretty and, disingenuous. It was, he was, he was just lying yeah. about where he was going to hit it to try and gain an advantage. Yeah. It's like completely against <clears throat> the spirit of the rules of golf. Anyways, as the, as you, the, as the playground Karma. kids would say, ball don't lie, Bo Hostler. Congrats, Kevin Yu. I'm, a, I'm actually kind of excited about Kevin Yu. Do I think, he, do I think he's going to be like a surefire top 10 player in the world? No. But I think he's a really, really good player, um, and I'm in a in a young player who's gotten up onto the tour and now into the winner's cir- circle pretty quick through the PGA Tour. U. he was in the accelerated like onto the Corn Ferry Tour, dominated there last year. I believe was his rookie year on the PGA Tour. You know, wasn't terrible, wasn't great, but now he gets this win and he's up into a different echelon. He keeps progressing up, and yeah. that's always neat to watch like a young player do. Yep. Seemed to have been emotional with his folks. They, they hammered that storyline, uh, oh. which, you know, it's a, it's a good story, so but they just don't have enough. They don't have, like, I think they kind of could use some, like, college and amateur, like the guys who are deep in the weeds, like, Burkout, like, because you have this mishmash of, right, uh, especially these guys, like Wilson Fur, if they're doing like the cut line stuff on Friday, they could just throw facts out at you about and, and their backgrounds, you know? They need Brentley. And, you gotta get Brentley in there. 
I just Sean think it could be, it. especially these fall events. I don't know. Well, uh, Kevin, you is your winner hey, uh, in a playoff. What if every time a touchdown was scored in the NFL, they flashed to the parents and were like, no, you know, scoring touchdowns. Great. Nothing's better than scoring a touchdown with your parents in the stands. Uh, they sometimes do do the parents thing. A lot of college you know, games do that. You know who does the who's the NFL player with like the highest parents shown per per snap in the NFL? Purdy's got to be up there, don't they? Show his folks a lot. Who is it? It's Amon Ra. It's a hundred percent Amon Ra. No. no. Yes, it is. They show his dad the Mister Universe every time. Every time the Lions are on <laughs> he guys, TV, he guys, it's it's Tyson Bajans. Arm wrestling, oh, dad. Arm. Per snap, yeah, it per probably snap. is. Okay, per, per snap, it probably right. is. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Uh, Bud Colley, Daniel Berger, two off. Uh, you know, guys on their way back. Top tens. Mister Michael Thorpe Jornson, right off a of PGA Tour U one. He gets a T eight. Mister October, conveyor, off the conveyor belt. Mister October just showing up. Pat Gazire immediately comes in, just raking when the leaves change. He just just gets hot, goes yard. God, uh, it'd be so Pat. good. I feel like you could write a write a fall song about Pat and Kazire. Oh. It would be so good. Top of the charts. Uh, let's go to the Corn Ferry Tour Championship. Braden Thornberry wins at French Lick. A lot of drama as the cards are shuffling all the way down to the end. Your guy, Illinois' own Brian Campbell, just jams Alistair Dockery. Docker T. I, there's extra letters and consonants in there. I'm probably screwing up. Uh, Alistair Doherty uh, jams him out of a card. He was sitting pretty, gets bounced thanks to that. Uh, you know, Campbell was gassing it, right? To Because he had a chance to win the event. Uh, and, you know, left, I don't I want to say eight feet coming back. Makes that and knocks Doherty out. No good one in as number 30th. Uh, Doherty card. needed a solo second. No, T2. Or, or T, or T, or two person tie. A tie, two person yep. tie at yes. second. Sorry. It yes. was a two person tie at second. He needed Campbell uh, part. I mean, he parred in, but he birdied 15. So, like, yep. that's what got him up to a three way. So he ends with a three way tie at second. Yes. But if that's Knocks. like the crazy small margin, you know. Nuts. Guess Nuts. what? Like promotion relegation stories, they're good for the tour. Maybe they should be m- more of a part of the tour. It was a that was probably the most interesting hour of the day. Uh, I mean, St. Andrews was fabulous coming in, but that final hour, you had Pot Guider need to get up and down. Burley Boy, he's, he becomes Pot the guider. youngest to get his card or graduate via KFT since Jason Day. I think he's still only twenty. Uh, B. Dratty ambassador. They had the logo flashing big on, on that bunker shot from from above. Uh, he looks a little thin, by the way. Hot guy. I I feel like he's hitting the gym too much. <laughs> Seems like he's somebody he's needs to tell him needs Carl, to warn him about Carl Patterson. Carl Patterson, <laughs> the uh, the dangers of too much weight loss <laughs> to your motion. Um, Hot guyers looks like he's thinned out, but he gets in. Uh, hard luck is is Doherty. Goodwin's waiting around for hours and hours. Boshu had a chance, was playing well. He just sort of bombed out on Sunday. Same for Doc Redmond, who got who looked uh, very very bad there for about an hour, like sh- really struggling to uh, especially chip around the green. But Redmond needed to win. Would have gotten a card. He he gets a T two. Did not play well for for about an hour there on the coming in. Uh, great hour or great couple hours of, of action there. So that's your 30 guys into KFT. Any other notes from that one? Um, you know, a couple, couple guys that were like fee, not like, you know, thought to be surefire can't miss that have taken a, a while to get up there. I think just worth noting, you know, it's not always a direct shot with these, with these guys, sure. and, you know, sometimes it takes a couple of years and that can be a good thing for, for you know them in the long run, Braden Thorberry, who won, he needed to win to get in. Effectively, he's fifty first on the points list to start the week. Yeah, needed a dub, gets it. So Braden Thorberry, Walker Cupper, I think he was the the last of that Walker Cup team outside of Stu to 
to get his PGA Tour card. Isaiah Salinda gets up. Uh, mm-hmm. And then uh, John Pock, who was on the Seminole Walk Seminole team. Yes. Yeah. You know, a <clears throat> lot of people thought what was the best player at that point in amateur golf or, you know, on the short list. So Castillo, he's in there. There's yeah. some good, the like Pac and Castillo were two studs at that, that seminal Walker cup. So, you know, it doesn't happen right away. Sam well, Bennett is out man. 31. That's tough. Unsubstantiated rumor. So sudden Sam was going hard at the casino late Saturday with the, with this card on the line. Uh, Fresh Lick Resorts. Unsubstantiated room. Uh, he's 31. Just one shot. One one spot out. Doherty jumped from like 29 to 32 with that three-way tie. So uh, always a great, great uh, way to cap it off. I wish the tour would do more to like put it center stage and not have it sort of jammed in between. It's Sanders a bad time slot. Rose. Yeah. Terrible yeah. time not slot. Not great. Not great. Um, I mean, it, it, again, when you start to talk about the schedule, um, why don't we just get rid of some PGA Tour events so this could shine? This could be its own, the only event of the week, yeah. you know? I mean, it was, it was ending right like in like the witching hour too. Like, and not yeah. just an NFL Sunday, but like, I don't know, high time for NFL games finishing. Uh, <clears throat> not during NFL games was the Asia Pacific Am overnight. Wenye Ding wins that. Number five in Wagger, I believe. Heavy favorite to win that at Teheo in Japan. He goes and gets it gets it done. Uh, I think this is the 15th edition of the Asia Pacific Am. Ding will not use the exemptions earned to the Masters in the Open Championship via this uh, amateur title. He's turning pro uh, via, via the global pathway, you know, exemption setup that the European Tour has set up. He's on the doorstep. If not, I think he may already have a DP World Tour card. It's very, it's very Byzantine. I don't fully understand. You need to be top twenty in Wagger, I believe, or top twenty on the Global Pathway list. But he just he couldn't afford to not do it, and he's going to take his card, jump up, start playing pro. Wouldn't be shocking if he earns a open exemption via another way between now and Royal Port Rush Masters. Eh, it may be a little harder to get between now and April, but uh, he's going to turn pro. Not going to use the exemption. Still n- not unexpected. He's been runner up at this Asia Pacific game before. So, um, Last but not least, Furyk Furyk and Friends. Friends. Constellation Furyk and Friends. I don't think that's not even anything. It's not an open. It's not a classic. It's not an invitational. They just say Constellation, Furyk, and Friends. Everybody's no. a friend of Furyk. Okay. Everybody there's there. Not a championship. There's just, there's no, okay. Nomenclature. Just hitting the for ball that. with his friends. All right. Uh, our winner is Rocco Mediate, beats Bob Estes in red pants. Rocco, untucked shirt, has to have just the senior citizens just aghast. At an untucked shirt uh, on the Champs Tour. Uh, they win. Rocco's he wins insane. in a play. It's kooky. Goofball. Beats Bob Estes. Uh, We're in Jordan's untucked shirt. Love yeah. the vibe. Cigar the whole time. It's a great vibe. Yeah. It's a great vibe. Do you have anything from your Furex and Friend consumption? Yeah. So Saturday, Saturday as, I, as I mentioned uh, on Wednesday, that they, they were digging out the creators to come come. St- Save Furyk and friends. Little did I know that the creators, good, good, were going to be, I don't know if it was half, but maybe like 40% of the broadcast on Saturday. Well, it's, Papa's gone. So what did it, you got to turn to somebody? It was, it was, they were pretty much like live showing putts and approaches and tallying up how many birdies they were making for charity. The broadcast was stunned at how good Brad Dalkey was. I don't think anybody really knew, like, you know, they that he was they, actually good. They didn't remember <laughs> they didn't. when he, like, was an All-American for, no. like, three years at Oklahoma. No. Peter Jacobson oh. literally said, this Brad Dalkey kid, he, he, <laughs> is he a good player? <laughs> and I was like, dude, he literally won a national championship. Like, what is going on? <laughs> um, so that was that was the highlight. Wait, pretty- they, were playing the, they were playing? I thought they were commentating or no, something. No, no, no. They okay. went off in a foursome behind the last 
group on Saturday oh. and they were playing a scramble amongst themselves to like raise money for charity. They oh. had like a huge gallery of kids. So sure. I think we we found a Venn diagram this week of Good Good and Champions Tour viewers just by there were people at the Champions Tour event sure. to see the YouTube. Uh, they were. I didn't realize they were playing. Okay. So they had and the they broadcast were showing cameras. it on the on the broadcast. NBC they, Golf Channel. Yeah. They had okay. the broadcast cameras, and then they had their own camera guys, like also on the green. So like, mind blowing to the broadcast booth that yeah. like not only were they on TV, but they were also filming on DSLRs for YouTube. It was all there was a lot going on. I think the Venn diagram definitely expanded this week, though. I, you know, I don't know. I'm surprised. I'd be curious what other broadcasters might say about about it. You know, yeah, Russ Cockham can take anybody that hosts the podcast, give them two aside, and play them for their car podcasts. Not a fan. I mean, Dalkey's Dalk is good. Good's got a podcast. Yeah, uh, they do. Do they? Okay, sure, sure. I think Dalkey could. Uh, Russ Cochran could give them two aside. No, don't. don't I would like to one. see it. Don't and then I did want to also mention because I got tagged in it on Twitter probably 15 times. <laughs> You're just a depot of Champions Tour. <laughs> and I appreciate it. Rumors I enjoy and it. takes and opinions now. Okay. Tim, Tim Heron having a ball retriever <laughs> attached to his putter so that he doesn't have to bend down. The top of the putter, the grip, not the, the grip. Westy. Not, yeah, no. the grip. Yeah, the grip. Yeah. He just turns it around, sticks the grip in, and pulls the ball out. It's honestly one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. I, I don't. I think Nuclear tweeted it, and it it got a lot of traction. I got <laughs> oh, okay. tagged in it probably like fifteen times, <laughs> which I appreciate more than anything. But big shout out to Lumpy for uh, unapologetic about it too. Yeah, he's not hiding no. it. He's just not going to do a lot of waist bend. There. No. he's just plucking it with the no. okay all right did Any you see there was... what happened to jerry kelly why yeah. why my guy wd jerry kelly was in the field when we recorded on wednesday and it was not in the field by the weekend <laughs> oh, and I, I looked i looked far and wide for tweets or any acknowledgement oh you're researching i love that. um no acknowledgement on the internet for what could have possibly happened because i think we might be the only people who would tweet about that so, uh, did no, you see, no, uh, did you see Dickie pride and Brian gay were in the same group and on the walking score, it said gay pride. On I did not. I did not. <laughs> Pretty good. That, Champs tour. It's getting, getting, taking up new causes, getting outside their comfort zone with the walking sign that says gay pride. Love it. Love Our it. other two picks VJ in the final group was terrible today. Did not have it. And then Jim Furyk, the, uh, the peak cup bounce he did not, was not yeah. there. Hosting not duties, there peak cup. Yeah, he was, he just, it's been a long couple of weeks for him, I'm sure. The, we speaking of Russ Cochran, yes, we know J. Don Blake is in the field this week. We've known for six months. We've been tagged in this. We are gonna we're gonna get under the hood there. Reed Hughes, our 71 year old, finished. He went 76, 78 in Mississippi. Still, you know, admirable effort. Nothing too bad. DFL, but still. Not nothing too disastrous, and he hit one over 300 yards. 71 years old, so Jay Don's up next this week at the Black Desert, whatever Utah Championship. So, you want to jump in there, Andy? It looked like you're going to no, say something. I'm, okay. I can't wait for Jay Don week. I think maybe, that does maybe it. I'll maybe I'll bring in some more from the the Mormon show. The bad Mormon wives or life yeah. of Mormon wives. Maybe I'll like say that. say tell my wife we need to watch some stuff for research. <laughs> All right. Do it. Everyone enjoy your Mondays. Uh, Victory Monday for all of us here. We will be back for on the Wednesday. For, and not for PJ. PJ's not having Victory Monday. Mets are one and one. That's a good split down in Philadelphia. Best record. That's a good split. Right? That's not bad. I, Who's if, greedy? If, if, you, yeah, if you told me on, you know, Friday it was going to be one and one, I'd be like, okay, sure. But the, the process of which it yeah, happened was really uh, demoralizing. Of course. I just I I can't believe Aaron Rodgers is is betraying PJ, and just two weeks after he was proclaiming he'd never seen quarterback play like that. Because Much thing, I, I had the, I had it. I've seen the, plenty of this today. Um, yeah, it was bad. Which is maybe bad. forewarning to Andy about Caleb and the Panthers. And PJ was this guy two weeks ago against 
the Pats on a Thursday uh, night. Okay. Yeah, I'm 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 riding. I'm I'm going down with the ship if we're going down, but I don't think we're going I down. It. I love it. All right, everyone enjoy your Mondays. We'll be back with you on Wednesday.